offer our clients is our information and our education that they do not have and how we're going to deal with problems as they come up and how we're going to deal with loans and uh, even if it's a cash, all the things that happen, they don't understand. They write a contract, they think it's done. We've got to carry everything in the background all the way through to get us to closing. So value that we need to put out there is everything that we do um, after closing. I mean, after we go under contract all the way through to closing. That is very important as you're working with the buyer, the same with the seller, not just marketing their property to get it sold, but what do you do afterwards? I, I think the first thing I try and bring to challenges is perspective. Um, they're in the middle of the storm often, and uh, I often try to encourage myself and the broker to, to rise up from the storm and, and look down on it and really see where the issue is. Um, and it often, there's so much that the parties agree to um, that it, it usually boils down to one or two things, but the whole, uh, the whole deal feels like it's in the balance. Um, so perspective, I think, is, is critically important. I think communication is, is vital. Um, it, it's really disheartening when someone hasn't heard from the other broker in hours or days and everyone's kind of deal is on the line. Um, so I think communication is, a, is another big one. This business can be overwhelming and it hasn't gotten easier. I, I talked to somebody just a little while ago uh, as I walked in here about how overwhelming it can be with uh, texting not faxes anymore, I'm showing my age. Um, emails and, and the contracts have gone from being, what, six pages to whatever. Ben Trout said last year that she wrote the contract on one page on the hood of her car after a show. Yeah. One page. <laughs> and I think it was uh, Ronnie Christopher who told me years ago that you could actually write a, a binding contract in a bar on a napkin. And I think he was right. Um, our business is overly complex. It's very difficult. I've been reading a, a great book by uh, Marcus Aurelius, who was a uh, Roman emperor who became emperor in 140 AD. And uh, he's written a book on his various thoughts. And I'll paraphrase one of his thoughts that was uh, if you're overwhelmed, do less. As a new person and you're looking for business, do the open houses. Go ask anybody that's got a property and let them let you sit in an open house and start building your database. Because it's got to start someplace. And those are good things to do as a brand new broker. Go to the office. Go to the office as wonderful as it was and maybe is to write contracts in your PJs and, and do everything from home. Especially post-pandemic, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, go to the office because there's real magic that happens in the office. Go in there because if other people are there, you will learn, your learning curve will be much uh, um, uh, less steep. You will gain insight into deals that are happening. Um, you will feel better about the people that you're working with. Um, and you, you'll, you'll jump in the car and go to an open house, right? Uh, all these things happen when you get out of the house. Go. Sweet basil. Go. Zeno. Zeno. Go. Lancelot for the prime rib. Ooh. Main Street Grill. Okay. Yeah. Favorite ski run. Go. I have two. Avanti. No, nope, just one. <laughs> no. Just one. Vale, Avanti, uh, and in Beaver Creek Carrier. Okay. North Rim Run. Ooh. River Ridge. Ooh. Money was not an issue. Where in the Vail Valley would be your dream home and location? Mine is Mill Creek Circle. I, I had to take that. Sorry. How about you? I like that area that's kind of east of Betty Ford, and before you go down Vail Valley Drive, I like it right around that. There's a hole there, golf course or I don't play golf, so I don't know what it is. In Vail, Mount Star or Lake Creek. 
It was three, but okay. <laughs> uh, Mountain Star. They, there's something about the view at any time of year that I think just represents everything we're selling. So, Mountain Star. That's for me too, because I love the views and I love the space that's up there. Mountain Star. <laughs> We showed the house and there was, we'd been out in the backyard and so there was um, a cat out on the, the patio. And so I thought, oh my God, we left the cat out because I'd had a listing with a, a friend of my husband's that had, they had literally five cats. And so I would have to track down the five cats because his wife always said, don't let the cats out, don't let the cats out. I never saw most of the cats but I still have to look under beds and in closets. So when I'm in this house and there's a cat on the patio, I thought, oh my God. So I put the cat in the house, locked it up and left, and I got a call from the listing broker saying, Amy, there's a cat in the house and it has had accidents all over the house. So it was not their cat. They did not have a cat. <laughs> so between selling full time and kind of assuming more management role, I was our company photographer. And I had no business being a photographer, but that's what dad told me I was doing, so that's what I did. And I got a photo request for a home in Sweetwater. And it was right when digital cameras were coming out, so Grabbed the digital camera, grabbed the IPEX. Do you remember IPEX that took the stitch, the 360 degree view, um, pre Matterport, and all of that? And uh, loaded up to go to Sweetwater. Got the address, had everything. And if you know Sweetwater, it's not exactly the most well marked uh, place on the planet. So get to the house, um, open up and photograph everything, do the outside. Scurry back down to the office, upload the photos to my hard drive, email them to the broker. Broker gets them, calls me. These are really nice photos. I said, Thanks. He said, This is not the listing. <laughs> and I said, Okay. So I had spent an hour and a half at somebody else's home um, uh, photographing everything I could. And a young couple with a toddler. And the property was empty. There were no furnishings, nothing in it. And so they're looking at it and the time watching the toddler who is they're not paying any attention to, but they have called me to ask me some questions. And then all of a sudden we realized the toddler is gone. The toddler got locked in the master closet. And for some reason, the closet had a lock on the inside that it could push. I had to go out to my car, get my handy little tool kit to take the door off the hinges. We opened the door, and this is a child that's been screaming since we figured I couldn't get out. The smell <laughs> on the diaper. <laughs> yeah. Uh, when you're showing the home to buyers, never say it's okay to use the bathroom without checking to make sure the water is turning on. Yeah. <laughs>